Hi there, it's Katie Kreisdell here from Lakeview Aquatic Consultants. Welcome back to your weekly Aquatic Industry Insider. In this video, I'm going to talk about why I'm in Switzerland this week and how different standard setting organizations benefit the aquatic industry. So obviously a different environment this week. I'm in Bern, Switzerland, and a couple people had asked me, why are you going to Switzerland? What are you doing? Are you paying for it yourself? Who's paying for this? How does it work? So I thought I would talk a little bit about standard setting organizations, their role in our industry, as well as how you can get involved if this is something you're interested in learning more about or doing. So a number of years ago, I responded to a call out for the ASTM Residential Drowning Technology Committee Standard Development Group. So that was open to anyone, that is open to anyone, who would like to join the construction, like the development of a standard to test and accredit products associated with preventing residential drowning in basically backyard swimming pools. So that committee is still ongoing. They are close to publishing a standard and essentially any product on the market that wants to receive that ASTM stamp of approval will then take their product to a third party lab testing agency and then have their product tested against an established standard that is written by industry experts to confirm that their product meets certain minimums. So from 2020 to the end of 2022, I was the co-chair of that committee. We met every month. We worked on writing the standard, researching drowning technology. I learned a lot from that committee about how to write a standard, how to collaborate within the industry. It is different manufacturers, different producers, different technology individuals, so people ranging from inventors to the Consumer Product Safety Commission to people like me with a water safety and drowning prevention background. 2023, I stepped back from that committee. I'm still on it, but I no longer co-chair it, and I've only dropped in periodically to see what that group is doing. Through my work with that committee, I got connected to the man who is the chair of the Canadian mirror committee for ISO, the International Standards Organization. So this individual chairs a lot of different ISO groups, uh, what they call work items, different committees on standards and things like playground safety and um, manageable risk. And this individual had said to me, you know, I noticed your experience in aquatics and water safety. I would like to invite you to become part of the Standards Council of Canada and part of the ISO mirror committee because with the ISO committee, you do have to be nominated to your country's committee, which is not necessarily hard to do, but you do have to be accepted within your country's committee. And then your country's committee is a part of the collaboration internationally for the ISO standard. So I am part of the Canadian Mirror Group for an ISO standard, which is about commercial drowning technology systems. And so essentially I've been involved in the revisions to this ISO standard as a Canadian delegate to the international uh, work that we're doing. And so when we have these meetings, there's people from the US, there's people from France, people from England, from Norway, from Italy, from Australia, from the Philippines, any country is welcome to send delegates to the committee. They do have to register, but essentially that information is accessible to those committee members. I attended a number of virtual committee meetings in 2022 and then in early 2023 and then in late 2023 one of the meetings was going to be hybrid so there was an option to meet in person in Toronto. I did go to that and I found that it was really really beneficial. I am definitely a supporter of hybrid meetings. I think Zoom meetings, WebEx, Teams, whatever you're using makes tremendous financial sense for a lot of people. But I know in the type of work that we were doing, really drilling into textual revisions and discussion, I found that in-person meeting in Toronto in fall 2023 so valuable. And so when it was announced in January 2024 that the next hybrid meeting would be offered in Bern, Switzerland at the Swiss Council for Accident Prevention, I just made a spontaneous decision to come to Switzerland after reviewing that the flights were pretty affordable. I probably wouldn't have come if the flights were not affordable because there is no financial support 
for committee work. Committee work is basically something that you do as an industry professional out of the goodness of your heart because you believe in the standard or you believe in the uh, effect of the standard in terms of I believe in our ability to reduce uh, drownings, to increase water safety if we have a clear product standard that products can be measured against. I think it is worthwhile for successful products to be measured at a higher standard than products that meet no standard. And so I do believe in that standard writing process. That is not the case for all products currently on the market, that they don't necessarily meet a standard, they don't have a standard. So all of that to say, I thought if I can make this meeting work, that is one of the forms of ways that I donate my time and some financial resources. I don't get anything in personal return, professional return necessarily. Uh, I don't have any financial compensation from doing this work, but it is really, really interesting in terms of the people that you meet, the discussions that we have. So that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about today, was just briefly discuss what those meetings look like and then what, uh, what I take away as an aquatic industry professional from my work day to day. So it's currently Thursday, April 18th, 2024. I arrived in Bern, Switzerland yesterday. I flew into Zurich from Calgary via Toronto, got to experience some of the delays associated with the catering strike at Pearson Airport. And then from Zurich to Bern, I took a train and I had about a, you know, overnight to recover. We had our first meeting today, Thursday, eight hour day, very typical, sit around a conference table, discuss in great detail the individual words, sentences, references of a document. We came in with 110, I believe, uh, comments for revision. So that basically means that each country looked at the proposed document and went line by line and said, you know, on line seven, we would like this change. And lots of those changes required intensive debate from the people present in the room, different opinions on background perspective, what will happen if we say this versus that, what are the implications for our industry, for producers, for patents, for customers, for water safety. It's a really, really brain intensive discussion, but it's really, really valuable. And so my first takeaway from something like this is that when we see a product standard out there, whether it is for a crib, whether it is for a bed or a piece of furniture or a piece of exercise equipment, there is typically a lot of thought that has gone into that development of that product standard. So we finished uh, just recently, you can see, still dressed up from that meeting. Uh, the Swiss Council for Accident Prevention hosted us here, hosted us here in Bern. So they provided coffee and lunch, and predictably, because we're in Switzerland, the most delicious little chocolate sticks that we were all sort of, you know, <laughs> everybody had more chocolate sticks than they needed. But really, really beneficial day. And so then tomorrow we're going to come back, meet for the same amount of time, essentially have continuing discussions about the document, research we want to do. We're also gonna hear from an expert in Japan, virtually, who's gonna present on some research that he's been doing associated with drowning technology. One of the things we talked about today was Apple Technologies patent filing regarding the Apple Watch being a water safety or drowning detection device. I'll post a link to the video I did on that patent filing a couple of weeks ago. But the bulk of the discussions today, I'm not going to mention. They're not secret per se, insofar as anybody can join their country's mirror committee if accepted and participate in the agenda and the meeting notes from these uh, committees. However, everything we're doing is still in draft or proposed form, so it's not final. And the final documents from past versions are available online. I don't have the history as to why this ISO standard requires such dramatic revision. I was brought in later to the process after they'd already decided to revise this standard. I don't have that history. Some of the people in the room that I'm meeting with do have that history and this goes back to 2015, 2013. So I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty new <laughs> to the team in that sense. But really, really interesting day, really, really interesting process. 
And I've had a lot of takeaways for me in my day-to-day -day work in aquatics in Alberta and Canada. And one of the big ones today was the precision of language, how other people interpret the same terms, both in English as well as translated into other languages. Things that I can speak to generally like drowning. Is drowning only submersion that is fatal? Is it non-fatal? Should we continue to use terms like dry drowning? Um, one thing that came up today that I'd never considered before that I thought was really interesting was a non-English speaker was asking about shallow water blackout. Well, what if it's not shallow water? What if the water is three or four meters deep? Why do we still call it shallow water blackout? I surmised that it's in distinction to something like a scuba related injury at great depths, but I don't know. And so it's really, really interesting process for somebody like me who's interested in the research, who's interested in how we come up with these things, but it is very brain intensive and um, not something you can do day to day. So this is just a short video. I wanted to talk about why I'm in Switzerland. I will be here for the two day meeting and then I'm staying a couple days in Bern. It is the capital of Switzerland. It's absolutely beautiful. The weather is not very warm, but it's a lovely cobblestone streets and old Swiss buildings and a lot of history and culture and just very much a vibe as they say in terms of cafe culture and delicious food. I know tonight usually with these committee meetings there's one big dinner usually a bit more expensive than I would like to pay but we're going to a very well-known traditional Swiss restaurant with all these very traditional Swiss dishes not just fondue and raclette but very you know certain boiled meats and cured hams and it's just very interesting opportunity and it's definitely a different part of the aquatic industry that I did not see when I was a pool manager. And I think one of the things that I'm most grateful for as somebody who has their own business and the opportunity to, to direct my own work that I can look at these other parts of our industry where I can contribute my skills, my knowledge and participate in change and development of things that we all need but in a way that is outside of the sphere or maybe the little bubble that I'm sometimes in in Alberta or Canada. So that's it for this week. I hope to see you next week. If you like this video, please give it a like. Please comment below if you didn't like this video or anything else you think I should consider. Let me know if you're involved in committee work in your community, in your state, in your province. What does that look like? And we'll catch you again soon.